Hey guys, so let's talk about episode two of Dragon Ball Dime. I just finished watching it. It's called Glorio. Uh, spoiler alert, this is uh, where Glorio, the character, is introduced. Uh, as usual, this uh, review will contain spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled on the plot or what happens in episode two of Dragon Ball Dime, I suggest you click off the video. So we're going to start talking about the episode now. Uh, I have a lot of notes that I took on my phone here, so I'm going to be just going through some of the notes to, to go over what happened in the episode so I can remember everything. This is the first episode where we actually did see the official opening and the ending of the series as well. I'm not sure if there's going to be multiple versions of the opening as we go through. I imagine it's not going to change like how Super had different openings depending on sort of like what the arc that was going on. I don't think it's going to be different openings for, for um, Daima. I think it's all going to be the same. Um, I also have DBS Hype's Twitter open just because he has posted some images from the episode that we can sort of reference as I talk about what happened. So the opening I thought was pretty good. Um, there were no, from what I could tell, like super major details that were able to look at and sort of get like a bunch of hints and uh, about like what potentially we could see plot wise. There are some things you can infer. Uh, there were uh, very heavy emphasis on the Tamagami, which I talked about in the first episode uh, review, which is sort of just the uh, demon world guardians of the Dragon Balls, the three like robotic, I guess, Dragon Ball guardian things. Uh, there's scenes where there were, you know, fighting with weapons. Uh, there was one image, I believe, where they showed Deborah and what looked to be like a fat version of Deborah next to him, which I'm assuming is Abura, who is his his, his father, which Goma mentioned in the first episode. Uh, kind of reminded me a bit of like Beerus and Champa back when like Super first dropped and we didn't know who Champa was in the intro. It was kind of just a fat version of Beerus, and this kind of reminds me of that. It's just Deborah and a fat version of Deborah standing next to each other. I don't think uh, DBS Hype has a picture of that yet. Um, and then there was like one other guy in the intro, like he, he, guy looked like a minotaur or something. I don't know if he's going to be important or not, but he showed up in the intro. We have no idea who that is, but uh, yeah, I think the intro was pretty good. Uh, the animation of the intro was very good. And uh, I, I personally, I, I, I do enjoy uh, the opening song. Uh, the opening song has gotten a lot of backlash by a lot of Japanese fans. People are calling it lame. People are calling it just like not very good. Uh, there's a lot of backlash about that in Japan, about that opening song. I personally don't think it's that bad, um, but uh, yeah, people definitely have their opinions about it. Uh, certainly among the Japanese fandom, not very positive opinions, mostly. Um, so the uh, episode opens sort of taking, um, uh, I guess, just, just going off of where we left off with in the last episode, where Goma wishes for the entire crew to be, uh, I don't know, baby, baby eyes. I don't know even what <laughs> Turn back into into kids and, and babies and just, you know, back to uh, small form, I guess is what I'll say, because uh, we have characters even like Master Roshi who are now small again. Uh, by the way, uh, I did mention in the first review that uh, they were planning on doing two more wishes. So Goma wishes for obviously the whole cast to become, you know, young again. And uh, Shenron was like, uh, and then Goma says like, okay, I have two more wishes now. And Shenron is like, Actually, I only grant three wishes to regular users of the Dragon Balls. And so he just disappears and Goma only gets his one wish, which is a little bit strange. I don't know when that became a thing. Uh, he's like, this, this is, since this is your first time using the Dragon Balls, I'm only going to grant you one wish. And then he just <laughs> disappears. So that I thought was pretty interesting. I've never heard of that rule before. I think that's just something they probably just made up for this uh, the series. Um, and then so what happens is Goma ends up taking Dende. Here's a good picture of Dende who is just completely a, uh, a baby at this point. Um, he just takes Dende away, and the reasoning is because uh, he doesn't want Dende to be on Earth so that the people of Earth can no longer use the Dragon Balls, obviously, sort of like as a protection for himself. Um, so Goku and the whole cast are sort of like looking at each other and like, oh my god, what happened? We're all, we're all kids again, we're all babies again. Uh, Goku tries to fly around and learns that he doesn't really have control over his body anymore. Um, and then Master Roshi says, um, it's because your body, you don't have, you don't have control over the balance of your body anymore because it's different than obviously when you were an adult. By the way, Roshi, I don't know if there's a picture of him here. Yeah, dude, he looks like Saitama from One Punch Man. This is what Roshi, is. doesn't he look like Saitama from One Punch Man a little bit? I don't know. This is Roshi. He definitely looks a lot different. Like Goku's even asking like, who are you? Because he doesn't even recognize him. That's how different he looks. Um... Then they start to get into uh, a bit of lore. Uh, they all come together and start talking a bit. Um, they, they go to the lookout. They go to Kami's lookout and they talk to Mr. Popo, who's also a kid again. Did they show Mr. Popo here? 
Uh, I don't think they do show Mr. Popo. Let me just see. No, I don't think so. They don't show Mr. Popo. Uh, but Mr. Popo tells them that, you know, they took Dende, they went back to the demon realm, um, and then Piccolo actually starts talking about some lore, which I don't really know how he knows this. I'm imagining it's just because it's the Kami or Nail portion of him that has some information about the demon realm. Um, according to my notes here, Piccolo knows Neba as the legendary Namekian who stayed in the demon realm. So he knows who Neba is, apparently. Um, and I say, it's not explained how he knows this. Probably the Kami or Nail side of him knows somehow. Yeah, so they don't really explain that. Uh, but Piccolo does actually know of Neba somehow, who's the, obviously the, the Namekian from the Demon Realm who came and allowed uh, Shenron to be summoned and stuff like that. Um, then Kibito actually teleports to... So Supreme Kai tells Kibito to get the to get the spaceship from the World of the Kai. So Kibito uses instant transmission to go to the World of the Kai's and he comes back immediately with a spaceship that is like very overridden with like moss and just very clearly not operational um and they say that they want to use the spaceship to head over to the demon realm and rescue dende uh but uh, obviously because it's been so long they can't use it and then goku says why don't we just have bulma look at the spaceship and try and fix it for us so after that there's a two-day time skip where uh bulma is sort of just fixing the ship and goku is trying to get accustomed to his body he's like doing He's flying around doing punches and kicks and he's like he's talking to himself saying like i can't i i, I'm, I just can't get used to the body it's not it, it doesn't feel the same as when i was uh, you know an adult um and uh what else we got here let's see bulma's picking up the spaceship yep kibito says those from the demon realm aren't free to come and go from the demon realm and only those who receive special permission can do so uh, and we did see that as an example when goma and uh it was goma and degasu and Neba were coming from the demon realm. They had to go through that like weird. I don't even know what what, what the hell to even call it. There's like this weird spaceship. You guys, if you saw, if you seen episode one, you know what I'm talking about. This like spaceship that you go into, and then there's like this other spaceship that tells you what to do and like where to go. Like it's like, I guess that's the thing that gives you permission. I don't know exactly what it meant, but yeah, that's that's what he's talking about. Uh, but it wasn't always that way in the past. So apparently in the past, people from the demon realm or who you know entities living in the demon realm were able to uh sort of exit the demon realm and travel throughout the universes apparently uh then goku visits Korin to get his power pole from him but uh Korin says that he left it with master roshi so goku goes to visit master roshi and uh apparently roshi is using goku's power pole as a drying rack for his laundry outside <laughs> They actually do show the sea turtle. I was not expecting uh, the Umigame to make an appearance in, in Dragon Ball Daima, but we did get the we did get the turtle to make an appearance here, which is pretty fun. I, I actually was I kind of liked that they showed him for a second. Um, so Goku gets the power pull from Roshi, goes back to Korn's lookout, and he's actually immediately able to like perform very very advanced looking like you know martial arts moves with the power pole and i'm assuming the reasoning is just because he'd always use the power pole when in his uh, kid body so he probably just was instantly able to pick it back up again is what i'm assuming with that they didn't really explain it but he just he got back to kami's lookout and he was immediately he's like, he's like hey guys watch this he just like does like some like crazy moves with the power pole he's like extending it and you know retracting and stuff like that so towards the end of the episode uh, another ship arrives at the lookout and everyone is getting ready for a fight. You know, who's this going to be? Is this going to be someone else from the Demon Realm? And Glorio steps out. So this is our first introduction to the character of Glorio in Daima. Well, we kind of saw him for like a split second in episode one. He was kind of hiding behind the pillar in the in Goma's throne room. Um, so he gets out of the ship and he says that he has a request for Goku to come to the Demon Realm and defeat King Goma, who is, quote, an evil Majin who's ruling over the Demon Realm after the death of Deborah. So... Um, they kind of want Goku to come. They're like, how do you even know who Goku is? And he's like, okay, well, you know, they have uh, the, these screens playing out Goku's fight against Majin Buu. And obviously he was able to see Goku's strength as a result of uh, those screens. And he knows how strong Goku is. So he thinks Goku would have a, a decent chance of taking down Goma. Uh, Supreme Kai then says he knows who Goma is and also wants to come along too, since his younger brother Degasu is also involved in all of this. Um, and then Supreme Kai says that they should be careful. He says this to Goku, like, secretly on the side. He's like, we should be careful about Glorio since, you know, he didn't seem too, too surprised to see everybody changed into kids, even though he shouldn't even know about that, right? Um, 
And then uh, Vegeta says that he needs to go also in order to get the Dragon Balls and turn everyone back to their normal forms. But unfortunately, Gloria's spaceship uh, only fits three people. So uh, they're going to have to wait until Bulma is completely done fixing their own spaceship. Um, and then they can tag along later. And I guess we get confirmation kind of in the ending that that, that just happened because it literally shows Vegeta Piccolo and Bulma also <laughs> in the Demon Realm here at the end. Uh, we also got our first look at the ending. Uh, yeah, this is Goku doing the, the power pole like stuff I was talking about. Here's Master Roshi using the power pole as a, a drying rack for his laundry. I mean, obviously, th th this is probably not his laundry. Uh, there, there's the sea turtle, too. They got him in there. Uh, what else? We got any interesting images here? Not really. Here's here's Mr. Satan, Hercule. We got a decent look at him right here. Um, Trunks and Goten. And uh, that's really it. I mean, this is stuff from the opening. Uh, there's Trunks, Goten, and Dende, all his babies. And yeah, that's pretty much all we have in terms of images here. Here are some in images from the ending. Uh, the ending was certainly a lot less impressive than the opening was. The ending was essentially just a lot of still images. It wasn't even animated. Um, and like the last five seconds or so of the ending was animated. It was just like a very quick look at Goku. He was like, you know, looking out. He walked out to like some area and he looked back at the viewer. And that's sort of how the ending finished. Not really too impressive. The 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 song also wasn't really super catchy, at least from what I could tell. So not really super impressed, to be honest, about the ending. I thought it could have been way, done way better. These are some of the still images that they showed. Uh, but it looks like Gloria is going to be playing a big role here throughout this. Uh, we have Piccolo meditating. We have Goku and Vegeta sleeping in a very weird position. Uh, and then here's more. We have not been introduced to, uh, pa I think it's Ponzi is her name, name of this character. We have not int been introduced to her yet. And then there's also this guy. I have no idea who this even is. <laughs> have not shown us him at all. So I assume maybe the next episode or the one after that, we'll start to see uh, new characters like this Ponzi character. And then whoever this is, kind of looks like a yard rat almost, that guy, uh, come into the picture. But that's essentially a quick recap of what happened. Still kind of in the setting up phase of the series right now. We don't really have any action to go off of. It's kind of just what happens to, uh, you know, Goku and Vegeta and everybody else. And uh, they're, they're right now still establishing the background of Dragon Ball Daima as a story, uh, which I think is fine. It's going to take probably a few more episodes to do that. I would say by like episode five, we probably sh will be getting into like action and fights and stuff like that. Probably going to see at least something before then. I imagine next episode when they actually get to the demon realm, I'm assuming that's going to happen next episode. There's going to be some kind of fighting like they land and they get attacked by like a giant bug or something like that. I, I, I can definitely see something like that happening. And then Goku has to, you know, slowly learn how to use his body again. He's got the power pole. Uh, they've not yet shown Goku go Super Saiyan or anything like that. So. I think it's probably going to be just like a slow build up to Goku eventually just learning how to use uh, his body as a kid again. And obviously it's going to get to a point where he's going to be getting probably new forms at some point. He's going to go Super Saiyan 3 and then maybe something after that. Um, well, remember, this is technically post Buu Saga Goku, but he's this is before Super. So Super is technically not uh, happened yet at this point. So he's not going to have the God forms available and neither is Vegeta. So. Uh, I thought the episode overall looked very good visually. I don't really think there was a massive difference between episode two and episode one in terms of the animation quality, in terms of the art quality. Uh, they definitely had a lot of characters in this one. The beginning, we saw Goma, Neba, Degasu again. We had Dende, we had Mr. Popo. By the way, Mr. Popo, as like a kid, he has like, he does, he's not wearing a turban. He has like horns on his head. I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, and then we have the whole cast at the Trunks' birthday when they got, uh, you know, sort of turned back into uh, into kids. Uh, Bulma, Chi Chi, Master Roshi, Hercule was there, Trunks, Goten, Goku, Vegeta, Krillin, uh, Pickle, like, like literally the entire cast was there. We saw Korin in this episode. We saw the sea turtle, Umigame, in this episode. Uh, who else? Uh, we saw Glorio introduced as well. We saw, like, this is a lot of characters in this one. There's a lot of voice acting in this one. But overall, I thought it was a pretty fun episode. Again, it's not really super action-y yet. There aren't really many fight scenes. Um, I think that's fine for the first few episodes. It's just sort of setting up the background of the story and establishing what happens in, uh, uh, you know, sort of like the Daima universe. And it's not a real separate universe, but I'm just going to call it the Daima universe. Uh, but overall, I thought it was fine. Um, nothing really too insane yet. But um, I am pretty excited to see where this goes. I think they're setting up for a pretty interesting story here. Uh, obviously, the Demon Realm is going to be an area, I think, that is going to have uh, a lot of 
new and interesting things. They kind of hinted towards the Namekians being in the demon realm. I think Piccolo at one point, I don't have this in my notes because I think I was busy typing something else. Um, that's, I'm gonna have to, again, there's probably stuff I missed. We have to go back and rewatch some of it, but I think there was one point where Piccolo was even like, um, the Namekians lived in like a good area of the demon realm, but they were sort of just like overtaken by some other uh, people or entities or whatever. I didn't really hear exactly what he was talking about because I was busy t taking notes on other stuff. It's tough. I got a lot of notes here, man. I took a lot of notes. Um, but it looks like they are very focused on expanding the lore of the universe in Dragon Ball, which I think is always going to be uh, very cool because it's just going to leave a lot more space for new and exciting things to happen in the series, which I'm very excited about. So uh, we'll see if there's going to be some more action involved in the next week's episode. And uh, as we get into the Demon Realm and Goku and Vegeta and Supreme Kai and Glorio uh, start to embark on their journey in the Demon Realm, we get some exploration. Maybe we could see some, you know, kind of like, a, I guess, homage to like the Black Star Dragon Ball Saga and GT almost, but probably a little bit better handled, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think of a Dragon Ball Diamond episode two after you've watched it, or if you haven't watched it, what do you want to see from it? And what do you guys want to see from episode three and what do you think is going to happen? I'm excited. I am a Daima fan and I'm looking forward to episode three. Hope you guys enjoyed this review and I'll see you in the next one.